We've finished now our discussion of the letter opening, and now we move for a more concentrated look on the second element within Paul's letters, the Thanksgiving section. Now, right away, we're already uh, accomplishing something important uh, because many pastors, and I'm quite sure many parishioners too, don't even know that this thing called the Thanksgiving section exists. In other words, way too many people read Paul's letters and other letters of the New Testament. They hear the, the greeting, grace and peace be to you from God our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, and then they think somewhat naturally that what must come next is actually the body of the letter. And therefore, they're unaware that actually, no, we have something called a Thanksgiving section, which is unique and actually is preparatory, sets the stage for the rest of the letter to come. So uh, a Thanksgiving section is indeed, as I've suggested, a distinct epistolary unit. So it's not quite the letter opening, it's not the letter body. I mean, some scholars want to lump the Thanksgiving section as part of the opening, and that's not a bad thing as long as they recognize that it's distinct still from the other elements in the opening. But it's important for you to know that this thing exists, and it gets its name from the opening verb, every one of these Thanksgivings, one exception actually, but they all begin the same way. It begins in Greek, Eucharisto. Uh, in English, you'd say, I give thanks, or it could be the plural, Eucharistumen, we give thanks. Now, I like to show a comic here because the, this comic shows that the person who wrote this uh, went to my class and they learned something about the form or structure of Paul's letters. All the things that we've talked about so far are already found in this uh, comic. So this person knows that uh, the letter begins with the name of the author and, and Paul's just a little boy now, so it's not Paul, it's Paul E. And then he knows that there, that's followed by a title and he's not yet an apostle, he's still a kid called to be a camper set apart for archery and crafts and notice the interesting use of the divine passive. Then secondly you expect and you do find the recipients and it's not to the church of so-and-so with a positive descriptive phrase at this stage in his life it's just the parents gathered in the hometown. And then the third thing would be the the greeting, the, he hasn't Christianized the secular greeting and used the Jewish one. Here it's the plain old secular greetings. And then the interesting part for our discussion is we have this line. I give thanks daily for the cookies you sent. I count my poison ivy as loss. Now anybody who's had poison ivy, you have to be pretty sanctified to count it as loss. But the important part I hope you see is that this author of the comic knows that Paul, at the beginning of his letters, before he gets into the heart of the matter, he has an expression of thanks, the thanksgiving section. Now, there are a bunch of questions to ask about the thanksgiving section, and the first one is admittedly not the most important one, and so I'm going to deal with it rather quickly. That has to do with the source of the thanksgiving section, and the question is, where did this come from? Is Paul again just borrowing? Is he doing something what other letter writers of that day did, or is he doing something unique? And the answer to this question is a little bit difficult to determine because there's evidence for both. For example, uh, you have here letters in that day which do have an expression of thanks. Here is a secular letter that's been uncovered. Tobias to Apollonius, greeting. If you are well and if all your affairs and everything else is proceeding according to your will, that's a health wish, by the way, very common in letters of that day, many thanks to the gods. And we also are remembering you just as I should. And so that expression here, many thanks to the God, is striking. Somewhat like Paul at the beginning of his letter has an expression to God, so also this writer has at the beginning of his letter an expression to the gods. Here's another one. Uh, Papyrus 14.83, uh, or actually 4.23. Appian to his father and lord Epimachus, very many greetings. Before all else I pray that you are well and that you may prosper in continual health together with my sister and her daughter and my brother. I give thanks to the Lord Serapis because when I was endangered at sea, he rescued me immediately. Now you need to know that Serapis is actually an Egyptian god, and so what this author is doing, right, is the letters come from Egypt. He's giving thanks at the beginning of the letter to this Egyptian deity named Serapis. And uh, there are a couple more examples that you find here too. But in the interest of full disclosure, well, first of all, if you see all these things, uh, naturally some people would say, well, then Paul is copying from other letters of that day. Some letters in the day began with an opening greeting, and so Paul does the same thing. But yet you need to realize that Paul is actually still, though, quite different from other letter writers of that day. For instance, in terms of content, 
those other letters, secular letters, typically give thanks for physical health and well-being. And it's not that Paul isn't so concerned about those things, but he focuses on his thanksgiving on more spiritual matters. You get the triad, faith, hope, and love, which he then either puts in different orders, depending on emphasis and the letter situation, or he gives other reasons of a more spiritual growth nature. Paul also differs in form. These other thanksgivings we looked at from secular letters were very short and brief and simple. But Paul's, however, are quite long and actually quite sophisticated and complex. And maybe the biggest difference has to do with frequency. Truth be told, I had to look pretty hard to find those four examples that you saw. In other words, the vast majority of letters of that day do not have an expression of thanks in them. And so these are some of the reasons which then at least weaken the argument that Paul is just borrowing from the tradition of his day. So that argues for the other side, that Paul is doing something unique. And if he is, where did the idea come from? And most would say it comes from his Jewish background. That Paul, like, well, like a good, dare I say, reformed Christian, right? doesn't look at his life when good things happen and say, boy, was I ever lucky, or, you know, oh, fortune fortune was smiling on me. No, uh, he and Reformed Christians know very well that these good gifts that we enjoy come from God, and therefore the natural response is to give thanks to God. And so some have said instead that Paul's theology, his thinking, his frame of mind is this idea of giving thanks. And so Paul does something somewhat new, although it's indebted to his Jewish background, and thus he begins his letter with this expression of thanks. So you can see some other quotes in here that also say uh, the point I made earlier that, that the secular letters right, aren't very comparable or similar to Paul. And um, you can also see some quotes which look more to Paul's Jewish background as a source. But again, I don't want to spend too much time on this because exegetically uh, the payoff isn't as great and important as our next question is, which is still not quite as important as our last one. But now we turn to the next question, that is the form of a Thanksgiving section. So when you look at all of Paul's Thanksgivings and you lay them side by side, what is his normal or expected form, if we can find one? Well, uh, there is a proposal from Ann Jervis that there are five different functional units in a Thanksgiving section. So what are they? First, you have the principal verb, which we've already talked about, and that is the main verb, to give thanks, and usually with the object, to whom? To God, because Paul is, in a sense, pointing his hand up and saying, I'm giving thanks to God. The second thing he does, though, is the manner of thanksgiving. There are a lot of ways in which we can say thank you to God, and Paul doesn't sing his thanksgiving, and he doesn't do a liturgical dance. No, Paul says, the way that I give thanks to God is through what? Through my remembering you in my prayers. So he either has the participle praying or the phrase making remembrance in my prayers. The third thing is a causal statement. That makes sense. Paul says, I give thanks to God. I do so through my prayers. And then the third thing is, why? You guys are doing something. So, so the audience is doing something, and that cause is what is motivating Paul to give thanks to God. The fourth unit is perhaps the weakest in the structure because it's not the most consistent. We could call it explanatory because it either does one of two things. It either explains the third one, namely the cause, so it spells out in greater detail what were the causes for Thanksgiving, or it can give additional reasons for Thanksgiving. And then the fifth and final unit is the so-called prayer report. It's always introduced with the phrase, I pray, or we pray that. And Paul, in a summary fashion, uh, tells his readers what it is that he's praying for them. Permit me to uh, make sure that you don't confuse number two and five, because students often do. And it's understandable, because both two and five have to do with prayer. But there is an important difference. So let's imagine um, I pull my, my son, my six foot five, 220 pound, 20 year old son aside, and I say to him, uh, Sam, uh, mom and I are remembering you in my, in our prayers. Okay, so that's an example of number two, right? We're just telling our son that, you know, we are thinking about him, and more specifically, we're praying for him. 
But number five would be a little different. Number five is, Sam, uh, Mom and I are praying that what? You'll study hard at school, that you use wisely the talents that God has entrusted into your care, that you'll make good choices in terms of, you know, what to do and what not to do. You see the difference? Number five, well, we're not giving him a recording. It's not like I had a tape recorder and, and, and now I'm playing back for him word for word what, you know, my wife and I have been praying for him. But in a summary way, I'm reporting to him the content of our prayers. And we'll come back to that in just a moment in terms of function, but uh, I, I want you to make sure you don't confuse number two and number five. Now, in order to illustrate these five parts, let's look at one Thanksgiving, and I've picked Philippians, and you can see them all here. So the first unit is the statement of Thanksgiving, and we find it there in verse three. I thank my God. The second thing we expect to find, and we do, is an expression of thanksgiving, a manner of thanksgiving, focusing on the verb to pray or make remembrance of you in my prayers. And both of them are found here. You find it in 3b and in the first part of verse 4. Paul says, every time I remember you and constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. The third thing that we propose to find is the causal statement, the reason for thanksgiving, and we find that then in verse 5, because, right, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. The Philippians have been giving uh, for sure money and also a helper, Epaphroditus, so that Paul can carry on his ministry. The fourth unit is a little harder to see, but it's probably there in verse 7. Remember, that's the explanatory or the additional causes of thanksgiving. He says, it is right for me to think this way about all of you because right, you hold me in your heart. And he goes on to, to flesh that out. And then the fifth unit, which is not found in all the thanksgivings, but it is found in this one, that's the prayer report. It's easy to find. Verse 9 begins by saying, and this is my prayer. So everything in 9, 10, and 11 is the so-called report, the summary of what Paul uh, prays for the Christians in uh, Philippi. So, so far we've... Uh, highlighted the fact that this thing exists, a Thanksgiving section. We've uh, looked at very quickly its source and we've also looked rather quickly at its form or structure. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll talk about the most important question and that is the function of this section.